Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. In this video, we're talking about many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI. Stay tuned. Okay, many-to-many -many relationships. So, why? People ask me when Microsoft released this, when the Power BI team released many to many, the feature into Power BI Desktop um, back in July 2018, it's like, why did they do it? And then some people were like, whoo hoo, yes, finally, they did it. Um, and so, and they go, well, Patrick, what do you think? I go, mm, ah, I use it where I need it, okay? And so, I got a lot of comments and emails. Can you kind of explain why they did this? And so, that's why I'm doing this video, okay? So, instead of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do what? Just head over to my laptop, okay? So, what you see here is I have two tables. I have one table that contains you know, states and cities and another one that contains states and cities. One is focusing on violent crimes per capita and one is fo focusing on population. And I like to analyze across the two, right? And so, I wanna establish a relationship just between the state abbreviations. That's all I wanna do. And if you try to do this prior to the two July update, you will get an error saying, hey, you need to have a distinct list of column, a distinct list of values for your key column on one side of the relationship. Right now, I have a many-to-many -many relationship because one um, state abbreviation in the crimes table will be related to many states in the, abbreviate, in the uh, population table, and then one abbreviation in the population table will be related to many abbreviations in the crime table. So now I have a, a many to many relationship, which didn't work, you just couldn't do it, right? You'd get that error and say, you gotta go fix this. And so a lot of us struggle and they were like, oh boy, why can't they just let us do many to many relationships, okay? There's a reason, you know, for from a data modeler, I, I pride myself on data modeling and one thing I wouldn't do is something like this, unless I just absolutely had to because it can introduce some ambiguities and produce questions by my end users that I just don't wanna answer, okay? And I'll explain, you know, towards the end. But anyway, back to this. So the workaround is to introduce a third table. And so some people go, well, Patrick, that's a bridge table or that's a cross-reference table. And so you can call them whatever you want. For me, I'm, I, you know, I, database is kind of my thing. And so this is not a true bridge table. It's just a table to help me resolve my many to many relationships. Go look up what a bridge table is and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you don't know, right? Most of you guys probably already know. But anyway, back here. So I have my third table and my third table is just composed of a distinct list of states um, which is just a combination of all the states here. I just combined all, I got a complete list of the states between the two tables and then I just distinct it out. I just removed all the duplicates, okay? And then what that allows me to do is, because prior to July 2018, I couldn't establish a many-to-many -many relationship. And so now, using that, I can establish a one-to-many relationship between you know, the crime table and the population table. And then I can use that middle table if I want to filter across the two, but there's a problem because there's additional attributes like city, state name and city name that's not available. And so if I went here and tried to do anything, you'll see how nothing's working um, across the two tables, right? But if I choose something here, right, it filters. So this middle table, so if I wanted to use city name or state name for any type of filtering or anything like that, I would have to make both of these relationships or whichever one I wanted to use bi-directional, right? So I would change the cross filter direction on both of these relationship to both. And so what would happen is, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. What would happen is once I establish that, then I can go back to my report and if I choose Georgia, it'll filter all the way through. If I choose Louisiana, well, it breaks. That's because Louisiana doesn't exist in both tables, okay? So that's what happens when you do that. And then if I go on the other side, start choosing things it works but if i choose something that don't exist on the other side like mississippi the other table blanks out okay this can get kind of confusing to those individuals that are building reports based on this model because they don't know which column to use or anything like that and like i said towards the end of the video i'll show you what i would do in this case right it may not work out in every case but in this case i'll show you what i would do to kind of resolve this okay so then july 2018 update came and microsoft introduced many to many. So basically just a copy of those other two tables without the third table. And now what I get to do, I'm gonna show you, I wanna show you actually what happens here, okay? So I'm gonna delete this relationship, right? Let's delete it. 
And so basically it's the same scenario that I had before, many to many between the two state abbreviations. If I establish that relationship, watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and establish this relationship. The property window is gonna open up and it's gonna say, hey, you're about to establish a many to many relationship. The cardinality of this relationship, right? It's many to many. I'm just letting you know, not saying you can't do it, I'm just letting you know. Okay, so let's accept it. And notice that it makes a cross filter direction both, right? Which is very important. So I'll go ahead and click okay. I don't need the third table anymore. There's my relationship with the cross filter direction set to both. I go back to my report, go to my many to many tab, and now notice if I click Georgia, it filters over here. If I click, you know, Illinois, it filters over there. It works great, right? It cross filters a, 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 a cross filters both the tables based on my selection. The challenge is now I've introduced common values against different columns and different tables. So if I'm an end user reporting against this, which one do I, which city do I use? Which state do I use? You know, which state abbreviation do I use? It can be a convoluted mess, right? It just can confuse the, I'm not gonna say it, right? Uh, maybe I'll say it, I'm not gonna say it, right? You confuse people. And so my recommendation, right, many to many is great. If there's no workaround, do it. Just be very careful, right? Be very careful if you can hide some things, if you can kind of provide your end users with direction on which columns or, you know, values, columns to use across the two tables would just make their life easier. If you can, right, if you can, you could take a different approach, which is my last, very last tab in this report. And what I would do is, and for you data modelers, you're like, I know where you're going with this, Patrick. What you can do is take all the columns across all the common data in both of those tables, you know, state, in my case, state abbreviation, state name, and city name, combine them into a distinct list, one single table, get your metrics if you can, in possibly one table, it would kind of look like this, this uh, relationship here. It would be a one-to-many relationship. One state can be related to many of the metric values, because I don't know how many cities I'm gonna have, which is associated to multiple states. You can create a key column, like I've done, hide some things, and now, when you give this report into an end user, they just use one table. So if you go here, I'm gonna to go to my field list and check it out. So I have a single table for all my geography. I can say, okay, let me, I'm gonna use the state as a slicer. So we'll make this as my slicer. Look how nice this is. One little bitty table. I'm gonna make this my slicer. So I have a complete, what are you doing? Here we go, did too much work. So we'll make this my slicer and bring my state name there Right, so there's my state name as my slicer. I'm gonna make this a little larger so you guys can see it. And then get my cities, right? Make that a bar chart. And then add population or something from my metrics table. Right, without guessing or anything, right? I clearly know what's going on. I don't have to figure out which table to select, which, where do I pull this column from? Which table should I pull this column from? I just know, because they have a single place that contains all that consolidated data, right? Not saying that many to many does not have use cases and scenarios where it's applicable. It's just that if you can, take the, take the next step, right? Don't be lazy, be efficient like me, right? Take the next step and kind of clean your model up. Okay, what do you guys think? Comments, questions, criticism? Post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. And if you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.